In 1984, Wendy's released one of the most influential commercials of all time. This simple 30 second ad not only made them over $292 million in less than a year, but it also made Wendy's a cultural phenomenon, eventually leading them to become the sixth largest fast food chain in the world. So what was this commercial that made Wendy's so successful? And more importantly, how could one commercial have such an enormous impact on people? To answer these questions, we need to travel back to 1983, a time when Wendy's was dealing with a huge problem. At the time, McDonald's and Burger King were by far the biggest leaders in the fast food market. Of course, there were many factors that contributed to this, but the one thing they both had in common was a flagship burger. With McDonald's Big Mac and Burger King's Whopper, they were able to sell the public on the idea that they had big burgers for a great price. On the contrary, Wendy's didn't have a burger like this. Rather, they mostly sold single patty burgers. But what the public didn't know was that their single patty burgers actually contained more meat than the Big Mac and the Whopper, but McDonald's and Burger King used big buns to try to make their burgers look bigger. So with that in mind, Wendy set out to create a marketing campaign to show the public exactly that that their burgers contained more meat and less bun than their competitors. But how are they going to do that? Well, they turned to the one man that can make it happen, a man who was a genius when it came to commercials, a man named Joe Settlemeyer. Joe was a film director who was a master at his craft and viewed the advertising world completely different than everyone else. So what was his secret? Well, in the 70s and 80s, most commercials usually featured flawless looking models to create an image of perfection for whatever product was being sold. But Joe flipped that narrative of upside down. He was one of the first directors to prove that using regular looking people worked just as well as models when it came to commercials. He was known for his looser, rough around the edges style and always tried to make his commercials more fun and engaging than everyone else. He's previously said that a commercial is something you watch when you sit down to watch something else you should at least be entertained. And this approach is what made him a rock star in the advertising world and led him to win multiple awards for his work. And so it was clear as day that Joe was exactly what Wendy's needed to deliver their message. So they brought him on to make their campaign. With Wendy's objective in mind, Joe brainstormed an idea for a commercial. His plan was for the ad to star a young couple, who of course were normal looking, at a fictitious restaurant with a giant burger in front of them. The couple would comment on how big the sandwich looked and how fluffy the buns were, but would soon be disappointed after they took off the top bun to reveal a tiny burger patty inside. The couple would then shout, where's the beef? Which would then lead into a voiceover telling the viewer that Wendy's burgers had more beef than the Big Mac and the Whopper. However, after Joe shot the commercial, he realized it just wasn't funny. He knew the where's the beef joke was great, but the couple in the commercial didn't deliver the line as well as he hoped. And so he ditched them in favor of another cast, a group of old men. But to Joe's surprise, this crew was just as unfunny as the couple. With Wendy's anxiously waiting for his commercial, he decided to try one more cast of characters, a group of old women. You might think using older women would have the same result as using older men. But what was special about this group was that it included a woman named Clara Peller, the actress who would not only launch Wendy's into the forefront of pop culture, but also make them hundreds of millions of dollars. Clara was born in 1902 and had spent 35 years working for a beauty salon in Chicago. She had no plans to act in her lifetime, but when a commercial being filmed in Chicago required a manicurist, the 80 year old decided to give the part a try. The agency filming that commercial ended up absolutely loving her for her tough, no nonsense manner and unique voice. And so they gave her an acting contract. And lo and behold, the agency that signed her was the same one that Joe worked for. So when he needed a cast of older women, Clara was his first pick to be a part of it. And so after Joe finalized his cast, he shot his commercial one last time. And the result was nothing short of amazing. It certainly is a big bun. It's a very big bun. Big fluffy bun. It's a very big fluffy bun. Where's the beef? Some hamburger places give you a lot less beef on a lot of bun. Where's the beef? At Wendy's, we serve a hamburger we modestly call a single. And Wendy's single has more beef than the Whopper or Big Mac. At Wendy's, you get more beef and less bun. Hey, where's the beef? I don't think there's anybody back there. You want something better. You're Wendy's kind of people. Joe loved this version of his commercial. He showed the final result to Wendy's, and after they quickly approved of it, his agency released the ad on January 10th, 1984. And what happened after that day was beyond any of Wendy's expectations. The commercial caught on like wildfire. The viewers of the ad loved how authentic and funny the commercial was, and also appreciated how different it was compared to every other commercial that featured models. Millions of 
people across America were shouting where's the beef at one another. And like Joe and his agency, everybody loved Clara specifically for her hilarious personality and discerning voice. And as a result, Wendy's capitalized big time. They ended up making many where's the beef promo items, including t-shirts, bumper stickers, frisbees, mugs, and more. On top of that, songwriter DJ Coyote McCloud wrote and performed a hit song titled where's the beef. And Clara's catchphrase was even associated with the 1984 presidential election when Walter Mondale used it as an insult toward his opponent during a debate on live TV. But despite all the free publicity, the one thing that mattered most to Wendy's was their increase in sales and Clara sure generated a lot of sales. By the end of 1984, Wendy's reported a 31% increase in sales to 945 million, an increase by $292 million. Their rapid growth put them in the same league as McDonald's and Burger King, and Wendy's senior vice president for corporate communication stated at the time that, Clara accomplished as much in five weeks as we did in 14 and a half years. But unfortunately for Wendy's, this massive success was very much short-lived. After Wendy saw Clara perform in a Prego commercial related to beef, they terminated her acting contract, claiming that her new gig, quote, infers that Clara found the beef at somewhere other than Wendy's, and this makes it extremely difficult for her to serve as a credible spokesperson for our products. The termination of her contract ended the Where's the Beef campaign, and Wendy's experienced a two-year sales slump as a result. But despite the sad and abrupt end to the campaign, Wendy's was still able to cement their place in advertising history with one of the most influential and profitable commercials ever created. Thank you all for watching. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below, and I hope you learned something new.